Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm going to show you how easy it can be to color grade your flat or log profile footage in Adobe Premiere Pro. So what I have open on the timeline is an example clip from a Canon C200 shot in Canon's C-Log picture mode. It doesn't matter whether you're using Sony's S-Log or Panasonic's V-Log. What a log footage is, is basically a more flat, neutral picture profile that allows you more flexibility when you're going in and adjusting the exposure, contrast, and color of all the shadows and highlights in different ranges in between. So it's something that I used to get confused about. It sounds really mathematical, log, it stands for logarithm. But basically all it is is these more neutral gray tones really take on whatever adjustments you give them. And that's why people choose to shoot with this is it gives them a lot more flexibility in the edits if you choose to. So getting started, I'm just going to work in the color window mode. This will just open up the Lumetri scopes on the left hand side and the Lumetri color tabs in the right hand side. A lot of people get really caught up with the exact preset and LUT that will match their Sony S-Log or their Panasonic V-Log. But I'm going to show you how it's, it's all basically generally the same and the workflow that I would take if I was just starting from scratch by hand. So if we open up the basic correction tab, First, you do have some preset input LUTs that Premiere gives you that are made specifically for the log profiles of different cameras like an Alexa. And some of these can actually give you a really good starting point depending on your footage. For example, this one here gives us a really great starting point. It adds a lot of contrast, brings it back up. And then you could always go into the tone section and just adjust the exposure, contrast, highlights, and whatnot. So just adding a little bit of exposure maybe a little bit of contrast, even a little bit of saturation if I want. And boom, we actually have brought that flat picture all the way to a really nice contrasted color just by using one of these default input LUTs. So that's how simple it can be. But let's say we didn't want to do that. Let's say we want to do it straight from scratch. So first of all, as we're working, these basic scopes on the left just give us some visual representation of the colors in our image kind of in a graph. You can see right now it's all kind of squeezed together because it's pretty flat. There's not much contrast. And these color wheels don't really extend out into any saturated territories. And you'll see them change as I begin adjusting. It can just help you visually see what's going on just to make sure your monitor isn't playing tricks on you. So starting out, let's do no input LUT, no shortcuts. Uh, let's add some exposure. I think we need some. And you can see that spreads out the histogram a bit. Let's add some contrast. I think we need a lot of contrast. If there was a lot of highlights or skies that were really white or blown out, I could lower those if I want. I could also lower the shadows if I think that they're a bit too gray. But you can set the black point to be lower, higher. The type of colorist that I personally am is very feeling based. I love adjusting sliders and just kind of getting a feel for how things are bouncing off of each other. But once you have a basic contrast added back in there. You can always uncheck and check to see before and afters. The next things you can do is go into the creative curves and color wheels panels to get some even more adjustments. So creative panel is where you can add film looks and things like that. Premiere comes with a bunch of built in film looks. I also have my own 21 LUT pack, which is loaded in here, which I have available for sale in my web shop. But for example, if I was to apply like a cross-processing Fuji type of look or a preset, it can instantly add that tone to it and you can adjust the intensity of it. So within this LUT, you get more green and purple cross-process vibes, a little bit more contrast, and I can adjust the strength of it. So this is how it would look before or after. That can be interesting for you if you're trying to go for a more creative look. I actually have a full tutorial on the basics of literally what all of these different adjustments and panels do. One on basic color correction and basic color grading, which I'll link. But for this workflow, for this photo, I really don't think I'm going to play around with, with these tints too much. So I'll double click them to bring them back to default. And I don't have to apply any creative LUTs if I don't want to, but I'll just keep it at a really low intensity. It's not really doing too much of a difference except for adding some green contrast in there for me. So next up, I'm going to go to the curves panel, and this is where we can really bring that contrast way back up because the curves is kind of how the original picture was made flat by shooting in the logarithmic curve. So with this tool, the shadows are represented on the left and the highlights on the right, the most black point on the bottom and the most white point on the top. So if we bring the shadows down a little bit, 
and we bring the highlights up a little bit, we can create a bit of an S curve that'll add a lot of contrast. You can also go into individual color channels if you want to influence the color in those. So let's say I wanted to bring some red tones into the shadows if I wanted that look or pull some reds out of the shadows for a more cool and cold look. I can also go into the greens, perhaps bring some greens out of the midtones. Really, this is for those fine-tuned adjustments if you're trying to get creative with the color grade or perhaps if your white balance or certain colors were not properly shot in camera, then you could fix it by pulling certain colors in and out of the color channels. You can also get creative in the hue saturation curves tab by making certain colors more saturated than others. So if I wanted to saturate my greens, I could pull those up. The yellows in there too, really get that green lawn popping out at us if I wanted that, that greenery. Uh, her sunglasses are kind of a darkish green as well, more maybe blue. And you can see how these points have spread out now that more saturation has been introduced into the image, which I think really touches it up nicely. You could get more creative with the colors in the color wheels as well, adding unique colors to the shadows, midtones, and highlights, or even just darken the shadows with the slider on the left, increase the midtones, increase the highlights a bit just to add even more contrast. And then I'm not really gonna play around with the HSL secondary, but again, I have a full tutorial on this. This allows you to adjust specific hues. So if I wanted to make that green even greener, I could just target those colors, for example, and increase the saturation of just those areas. Could look cool for certain shots, or if you really want to make a red dress pop, you could play around with that in this area. A uh, vignette is just a kind of a stylistic choice, I guess. You, you can add a vignette around the corners or leave it as is. There's already a bit of vignette that happens in certain lens combos, but I'm going to leave it as is in this one. And then I'm going to go back to basic correction, actually, and just play around with certain things like the exposure and contrast a bit more just to see if it looks better with all those different adjustments that we just made. So in this case, I'm pretty happy with this look for just the first run through. I went with a more contrasted, a little bit of green tones in there, a little bit of that green film look, and just bring up the saturation a lot for this image. I don't really have to adjust the temperature or tint because the white balance was shot pretty properly in camera for this example clip. But again, I have tutorials all on the basic correction that runs through every single one of these panels and their scenarios as well as basic color correction from scratch. And what I've done there is a pretty quick and fun workflow, I really like color grading, on how to bring that flat log footage back to life with some simple adjustments. Now, if you've got a collection of clips that are shot in a similar lighting, similar exposure and setting, and you're wondering if you have to do this for every little clip, there are shortcuts to make it easier for you. For example, you could use adjustment layers by going to the project, file, new, adjustment layer, and applying these Lumetri adjustments over top of multiple clips on this adjustment layer. You could also export the Lumetri color as a preset. Just save it as a preset. It'll pop up in your effects control panel. Or you could also export them as a dot look or dot cube file, which will create presets for them as well that you could use in the looks and LUT sections. So you could break your workflow up into saved chunks and segments. That'll make it a little bit easier for you. But that's a starting look on a general, very basic workflow on how to bring your log footage back to life with basic correction, creative, and curve tools. Not all cameras have this log profile. It's usually in ones with a little bit more features, a little bit more professional cameras. But you can see now why someone who has access to it would want to use it if they just wanted the most possible information to start with, the most flexibility. Almost like shooting raw, but it's not raw. And there are cameras that can actually shoot raw, but that's even more rare. Some cameras just give you the color straight out of the camera, how they think it's supposed to be with a pretty good pop and contrast right away. And that works fine as well. There's no reason not to add creative color on top of those starting points either. Like I said, this just gives you a little bit more flexibility. It's like dressing with layers to the beach. You can always take off your jacket, put a tank top on, rather than just going in your shorts and nothing else, and you can't really make clothes appear out of nowhere. 
Hopefully that's a decent analogy. Leave me your analogies in the comments. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you're not yet to stay tuned for all of my videos and check out the basic color correction and basic color grading in Premiere Pro where I go over this Lumetri panel a little bit more if you're still not too familiar with that. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter at Justin OD Show. I love to reach out with you there. Instagram DM is my favorite place to be. Leave a like on this video if you haven't. And once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.